Welcome to Milwaukee Studios, and today we're actually going to be talking about the layout of Panzoid Video Editor. So let's get into it. So the first thing is, is when you open up the program, it's going to look something like this. Don't get overwhelmed. This, this is actually the first step is just recognizing where everything is. I'm going to first talk to you guys about this top bar right up here. So basically, I'm going to highlight it for you guys to make it even easier. But basically, this top bar right, this is basically the entire website's different options that it has which there aren't too many options, but there are a few. So let's talk about them real quick. Right here, if you click on this, it's gonna pop up this drop down menu showing you every different option that it basically has on this website. So you have the home page where you can select in between everything. You have your clip maker tool, clip maker three preview tool, the backgrounder tool and the video editor tool, which is the one we're actually in right now. You also have the creations area and discussions and about Panzoid and the website and everything else. Right next to it, you can see Panzoid. You can hover over it. When you do that, it means that you can click on this and it'll bring you back just to the home page. You also have your login. So basically, you can click on that and it'll pull up this. You can sign in with Google, create an account. And after that, if you select on your icon, it will show you all these different options for your account settings and different things like that. And now when we're actually back in, I'm going to tell you guys about the basic layout of the actual video editing program. Basically, this one has three different panels, and I'm going to talk about each of them separately. But first, let me highlight them real quick. So first, we have this one. I'm going to call this the multi-panel slash the do everything panel. Right next to that, you actually have your viewer panel, which is your panel wherever you actually can preview your video and mess around with different playback options on the timeline. Also with that, you have underneath everything, you have your timeline and audio meter right here panel. So with that, I'm actually gonna be digging into the multi-panel first. So right up here in the top left corner, and I'm gonna be showing you guys a nifty little trick first. So if you click on this, it's actually gonna drop out this, and it's gonna read out all of the different names for them. So you have your media area, your sequence, edit, objects, effects, export, about, and feedback. Those are all of the different panels within it. You can actually click on the media, for instance, and now that we have the media selected, it's going to show you all the different options for media. So we have 3D scenes, adjustment layers, text, preset shapes, shapes, composites. You also have your import button right here, which if you want to import your own footage, you'd click on this, it would open up a file window for you to actually import the footage, press open on it, and it should start loading in that media right down here. Right above this entire panel is actually your save options, but underneath that you have your search media. So if you had multiple media or whatever, you can even just type in whatever it is and it will search your project for it. Right above that, I'm actually gonna talk about this one real quick because this is super important. This is where you're gonna be able to save export and everything else so basically with this you have your new um, project option which is control M you also have your open project so if you've already saved it need to open up a new one you can do that you also have your save option which is control S and basically when you save it it's just gonna open up a new browser window and it's automatically gonna download as a .pz file so you can actually open it up later inside of this program you also have your undo and redo buttons up here which is control Z and control Y and that's the basics of that little panel right there. With that, I'm going to go back down. So you have your media here. You also have your community media underneath. So this is basically everything that people have made with like, um, for instance, with Clipmaker, and you can actually make them public and shareable and different things like that. And you can basically take these, drag them up into this area, and it will actually save it. And you can use those 3D effects and everything inside of your video, which is super cool. That is one of the reasons why this tool is so unique, is because it is one of the only ones that combines 3D and video editing in one but it's also in the browser. So you're not having to like download a program or anything. It's just in the browser. With that, that's the basics of the actual media panel. Now I'm going to open this up and show you guys the sequence one. So the sequence one is basically where you're going to find all your different settings and stuff. So underneath here, you have your resolution, frame rate, your markers, um, and advanced things like your multi-sample motion blur, um, the samples and the shutter speed. With that, those are basically it. With most of these, to change any value or anything, you can actually drag them. For instance, so I'm changing the resolution right there, but let's say you wanted to change it, you can do a left click and just type in whatever you want instead. So let's say we wanted it 1280 by 1280. Um, now we have a square video. If you zoom out, you can see it's just 
1280 by 1280 um, or you can do 1280 by like 720 and basically that's how you get your custom resolutions and everything underneath that you do have your frame rate it does like jumping to like 30 or 60 slash whole numbers it really doesn't like if you put in like a two um, 29.97 frames per second which is really what I shoot in but it's completely fine in this kind of tool with that you also have more advanced things your marker tools right here um, if you need to reset anything, you can actually press this reset button and it'll change all the parameters back to its default. You also have your drop down here, so if you don't want to be able to see all of it just immediately, you can just do that. You have this, which is your actual toggle animation slash basically like um, what Premiere would use wherever you can animate it and it will actually pop up a panel in between, which I will show you. I just want to do that a little bit later for you guys. With that, we also have underneath here your motion blurs, samples, everything's the same. You also have drop down menus. Those are basically all the different options for changing values and stuff inside of this program. With that, now it's time to actually go into the edit page. As you can see, you actually need to select a clip. So for instance, I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to actually drag this one in here. And then I'm actually also going to just drag this into the timeline. And now if you select that clip, you can go back up here and you can click on the edit tool and you're going to see all the basic options for it. For instance, on his, you can actually see he's animated the volume by how the stopwatch is like this. And if you look at the full thing or if you actually go down to the timeline right above it, you can actually see all the keyframes right here for the audio. Um, and if you actually play it back, for instance, you can actually hear how it's kind of going up into the loudest volume set and then it comes back down um, and you can preview it right there as well so but with that I'm actually going to show you guys it has basic options like your volume pan stuff on this side so you have your basic audio options you have your scene options on the top so with this you can change media timings of it resolution position scale rotation opacity and blend mode and that's about it for the edit options on most clips but if for instance it is a 3d scene like for us it is actually because it is one of those clip maker ones you can actually use the next panel so with the next panel if you go back up here you can click on it and it's the objects panel this will show you every single 3D object in the scene and you can click on them. You can look at all the different animations on it right down here. So for instance, you can see that there's a shake amount and he animated the shake amount. But with that, you can see all of these. If you need to add something new, you just come up here, press this new button and it shows you all the different 3D things you can add. Um, you can also type to actually filter. So for instance, if we want text, you can just type in text and you can do custom 3D text right there. Once you actually have that, it will create the effect or whatever, and you can select on it, preview on this side, animate it, do all parameter changes right there. Underneath this, actually, we have the effects one. So this is basically where you're gonna be adding like chromatic aberration or a few different effects kind of like that. And for instance, on this one, he used anti-aliasing, wavy, colorize, bloom, image overlay twice, and he used a shutter option, but you can use your own, and it's the exact same as like the objects panel, wherever you can click that add button to add it, select it, and modify almost everything about that effect. So now I'm gonna show you guys actually how to export these videos. You can press this button right underneath, which is your export options. It'll give you three different options. You have your cloud render, device render, or single frame capture and basically select those and it will render it out and then you can press the download button and it should start the download for that project and you can select in between different resolutions and stuff i actually have a video from start to finish on this program if you want to see that should be on the top corner can't remember which corner but should be right there for you underneath that this panel we actually have the about so this is where you're going to find copyright information, the terms, policies, previous versions. You're going to see the actual like 2.063 is the version. You can see the recent changes. So they've added Bezier interpolation, added graph editor, added separately animated vector properties. So those are some of the new, more recent changes. You have your older changes right down below that. So that's what that panel is. Underneath that you have your feedback, so this one is what do you think about it, you can type in suggestions for it, select the drop down, you can type in a problem, a comment or a question, type it in and press the send feedback and it'll just send it to them. So that's the basics of that panel, now it's time to actually go down into the timeline one. So if you look at the full screen, it's literally just the one at the bottom, 
And with this one, basically this is how you're going to be combining clips, cutting them up, and doing everything else like that. You have your video tracks right here. You can actually hide a layer, for instance, by just clicking on that eye tool. You can delete them by pressing on the X. So for instance, we don't want a second audio track. We just delete the track completely. You can actually view the time right here. And you also have right next to it, you have all the different options. You have a cut tool, delete tool, link, unlink, um, zoom in and out tool to be able to use in the timeline. And now I'm gonna go out for you guys to be able to see it. But now you can see right here, you can move things if you have them selected, for instance, but I'm gonna undo that. Um, we have that, select the clip. You don't have to have it selected, to be honest. But now you have that, we're gonna go up to this viewer area. And with that, you can press the space key to actually play back, or you can even go forward a frame or back a frame, so you can go frame by frame on it. You can even, I'm gonna zoom out so you can see this a little better, but you jump from the entire beginning of the timeline or jump all the way to the end of the timeline. I hope you guys found this video informative. And with that said, I actually have a video over here talking more about specific things within this program. For instance, the composite shots and different things like that. We also have a video over here that YouTube recommends for you. And with that said, guys, remember, keep on editing.